Hey, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. And a reminder, we're going to be live on Twitch tonight for Thursday Night Football. Do not miss it. Enjoy the episode. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time <laughs> again. The realest of the real football time. It is football time. Well, I guess the real football time will be, you know, a few hours. Maybe 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Yes. Pacific at BallersLive.com. Maybe then it's football time. You excited, Jason? I am genuinely super duper excited. You know Jason's excited when he wears a polo brand polo. Well, I mean, <laughs> you got to stay on, on brand. Uh, not a lot of polo getting played anymore. I don't think. Well, I think maybe we're just not wealthy enough. The polo is for... Uh, Brooks, the, you own a polo team? Yeah, Brooks probably yeah, yeah. Brooks definitely has a polo team. Definitely. Welcome back, Brooksy. Hey, it's good to be back. Was he, he on a polo excursion? Uh, I mean, you could ask him. He's right here. No, I will not. I think I he was address then, him. yes. <laughs> uh, so these uh, fine gentlemen sitting next to me, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, uh, they alluded to it tonight. We will be live with you on Thursday night football and we're excited about this. It's going to be fun going to bring our own fantasy footballers brand of, uh, just emotion, reaction, fantasy football focused, uh, analysis to the game. Uh, I am really excited to find people have asked for this for a long time and the world has evolved. Like it's more kind of you know, what do you want from your football experience? And even major networks have gone out and made alternate broadcasts to cater to different people. We've seen the Manning cast. We've seen, um, you know, the all 22 channel now introduced by Amazon. So this is going to be a new angle. We're going to uh, talk through what fantasy players are actually experiencing and feeling through the game reacting to the plays on the field and answering fantasy questions as well during commercial breaks, hanging out with you all super excited, have had a lot of positive feedback, people looking forward to it. So don't screw it up guys is what I'm saying. Don't screw this up tonight. No high level analysis, talk about fantasy football and probably some fart sounds. Yeah. Right. A couple fart sounds and probably some tears when our own <laughs> personal players aren't performing up to expectation. Yeah, I really hope Jonathan Taylor delivers a big game for my lineup tonight. Oh, I'm, oh I'm, man, I got some yeah, bad news. It's not uh, it's save not it good. for the news, Mike. <laughs> okay, uh, busy day today. Thursday night football tonight, but we we went over the game a little bit on yesterday's show. News and notes on today's show. The forecast going through the matchups for Week Five, starts of the week on today's show as well. And Jason's boom boom kicker, which I know he has been painstakingly working on. And and part of what makes it so difficult to construct such a beautiful segment is he does use the uh like the feather tip or the the pen. The quill. Yeah, the quill. Thank I'm, you, Mike. I'm not really great at keeping the ink on the pen right, or the right. quill. Uh so that is that is part of the problem. It's I, it's pretty messy. Very messy. My desk is basically splatter paint at yeah. this point. Uh Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow us over there, you'll also be let known uh, when we go live. So at the FF ballers, we'll send out a note when we're live tonight. Let's get into never not working. Never not working presented by head and shoulders. Scalp shield technology available at Walmart. So for never not working, uh, we're, we're looking at bye weeks upcoming bye weeks. And we want to take a look and say, uh, how can we prepare? What do we need to know about the bye weeks? Next week, we're going to have some more practical information of like, who should we maybe specifically pick up for the bye apocalypses that are on the way? Week seven, there are four buys. Week nine, 
Week nine, oh my goodness. Ooh. Nine and 14, there are six bye weeks. So you want to be able to be prepared uh, for what's coming on. But bye weeks need context. You have to approach each position differently. Over the last two years on bye weeks with four or more teams, here are the fantasy point differentials. Okay, the average top 12 quarterback has a minimal drop of 25.9 fantasy points to 25 fantasy points. So uh, on, on big bye weeks, four plus teams, it's not that huge of a deal at quarterback because quarterback's replaceable, right? Sure. Yeah, you start one. Yeah, there's streaming options uh, every week. We give you our streaming picks. So I don't think you need to freak out about those bye weeks. All that being said, all that being said, I, I have personally planned. I, if you've got one of the big three, you know, uh, Jalen Hurts, uh, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, that's been carrying your team, you might, you know, Jalen Hurts is coming up next week. So I have kind of prepared a little bit. Yeah, you bit. want to think about it. Um, but the average top 12 running back score drops from 23 fantasy points to 19 fantasy points on those big bye weeks. You're not going to be able to replace your stud, but the median score goes down. So value touches. Take your two running back spots and look at their average touches. If you can get 28 combined touches on a bye week, you're basically in a good spot. So, uh, a, you know, a target is worth more than a carry. Guys like J.D. McKissick, um, you know, that are getting targets every game. He Somehow he is still available in 60% of leagues. We talk every waiver show about, like, there's no running backs. You can't pick up anyone that could start. You could pretty much always pick up a J.D. McKissick and play him. Um, and at, at wide receiver, a top 24 wide receiver output has a minimal drop from 18.8 to 18.5. Again, you could find startable wide receivers, especially in the flex territory. You can usually we'll, – we'll give you some guys you could pick up, not just for long-term stashes, promising rookies, but saying during the bye weeks, listen to the waiver show because we're going to say – you got a lot of players missing. Here's who you can plug into your lineup. There's guys like Zay Jones around, usually on the waiver wire. Yeah, and the nice thing is everybody's dealing with bye weeks. You're gonna feel it's just like we talk about with injuries. You're like, oh, I lost this player. You know who else lost a player? Your opponent. And everyone's opponent, because everyone's losing players all the time. Um but you you want to prepare coming up for the bye weeks. Running back is the position that if you can do the best job of preparing for and, and, and looking towards touches and opportunities and specifically targets. Try to stash some of those players now. And then next week, we're going to dive a little bit deeper because the, the major bye weeks are coming. And we're going to tell you exactly who to target, who to pick up. But look at your waiver wires now. This is going into week five. Bye weeks start. Week six. And running back is different. It's all about the opportunity to target that. All right, uh, get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working. Because, I mean, we're always working. Mm -hmm. Always. With Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Speaking of not working. Jonathan Taylor has been ruled out for tonight's game against the Broncos. This will be the first game in his entire career that he will miss due to injury, and that goes back to high school. Uh, he did miss a game, I think, due to COVID protocols last year, but first injured game for Jonathan Taylor. Too quick of a turnaround with the ankle. Jason, you said we should be rooting for this anyway. Get him back healthy in you know next week. Yeah, I mean, context there being that I, I it's a tough matchup and two injuries he's got the turf toe and the ankle so you you really want to have him heal up so that you can have the Jonathan Taylor you drafted with the first pick and not continually be disappointed by the performance of one of the best running backs in the league Alvin Kamara with the rib injury plans to return in week five this week against the Seahawks it's a good matchup put him back out there yes. oh absolutely yep Jalen Waddle did not practice due to a groin injury I'm I'm a little yeah. bit ah, McGroin. Now, he has more time because they had the Thursday night football game, so he's got 10 days of rest. That should hopefully be great news for getting him back out there. I am certainly more worried based on the fact that during the game, he left a couple of times. He was seen limping uh, on the sideline. Then he'd still come back in and play, but 
he's not at a hundred percent. And so like when I'm making my DraftKings lineups, I've I've really enjoyed looking Waddle's direction. I am not right now. David Montgomery didn't practice. It's a pretty bad sign Man. on him maybe missing another week. Yeah, for it, for them to call it day to day and be like, well, he's he still probably played last week. And yeah, he's not practicing. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, when it happened, he said, you know, the mechanism looks like an injury. He, you're going to miss multiple weeks, and that's what I wanted to go with. But then the coaching staff is like, oh, this is day to day. Yeah, this is a new coaching staff. So uh, I'm it's I'm not the magician. <laughs> I'm taking note. I'm taking note that you're you're a liar. Because it, we knew it wasn't day to day. Jason, I got bad news for you. They're all liars. They're all liars. Yeah, That's... lying lie faces. Well, it gives him such a competitive advantage. Yes. Yeah. Kyle Pitts, superstar, twenty-two years old today. Happy birthday, Kyle Pitts. Didn't practice hamstring injury. Yeah, so. Maybe is this like a hamstring birthday injury? Oh like, uh, uh, yeah. Ooh, uh, coach, I got a, I got a party a uh, hamstring i got a hamstring issue maybe uh look um obviously we don't want him to be hobbled we got to keep a look at the practice reports going forward if he has to miss if this is you know if this turns into an injury that keeps him away then congratulations you can score at your tight end oh, position oh man cool. right now he's just <laughs> been crushing you the algorithm says you are correct i mean this Rude. is great news for you, Andy. This is the time to double down. Him not playing is <laughs> maybe the key to him scoring. Um, I want to remind our audience. Do that, you? Yeah, I do, that you guaranteed the touchdown this week for Kyle Pitts. <laughs> so I say that because I want you to have that glory. Because what – I mean – that's awesome. I will say this. Is this like Kyle Pitts is inactive, but then at halftime they're like, just kidding. He was active the whole time. He's going to play the second half. Obviously, if he's not active, Andy is completely set free, right? If you make a bet and a player doesn't play, that's going to be retracted. The, the matchup is very good. Agreed. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, difficult, but the tight end is where you beat them. <sighs> J.K. Dobbins didn't practice due to a chest injury. Oh, that's interesting. Was limited last Wednesday with the same injury. Ended up full on Thursday, Friday, so don't panic yet. Not yet. Rashad Penny didn't practice due to a shoulder injury. And Hollywood Brown with the foot. I think it's probably same old, same old for Hollywood. He was really good last week. Missed some practice. Protecting him from injury. What about Penny? I I'm not personally worried about Penny. I know it's scary because it's Rashad Penny who misses so many games with so many different injuries. Uh, he had a heavy workload. And this was Wednesday practice. I think this is a day of rest. You've got to mark something on the injury report. If he misses Thursday's practice today, and, and maybe I doubt that will be out by the end of the show because they're West Coast. Um, but we'll monitor it and, and tweet it out. But I think he's fine. I'm not worried about – I mean, I think he's a bad play this week. But I'm not worried about the injury. TJ Hawkinson didn't practice. DeAndre Swift didn't practice. Amon Ra didn't practice. DJ Chark didn't practice. Did the Lions have a practice? Or? They all attended Kyle Pitt's birthday party. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So Swift is not likely to play this week. No, they. Th this is a team that has the week six bye. Yes. So I think that's a big deal. Absolutely, Amon Ra. That I mean, Amon Ra's timeline seemed like he would be able to get back, but if they've got a bye week the f the next week, this, might not happen. This seems like I I don't expect any of these play. Well, Hawkinson should play, but I don't expect Swift or Amon Ra. And maybe not chart playing this week. And this is in New England this week, right? Correct. Wandale Robinson, Kadarius Tony, both limited okay. in practice. I don't. Okay. I'm not going to believe they play until they literally step onto a field for a game, based on just the routine we're in with them. But but if they're getting in limited practice, I think you need to. If you're in a deeper deeper league, you should probably be stashing them at this point. T. Higgins limited with an ankle injury, Mike. Yeah, he I mean, it, again. It's Wednesday. He was also banged up in that uh, in in the Bengals game the the, the past week, kind of on off the field. Had a a moment where he was off, and the trainers were looking at it. He did go back in. So for now, this is just something to monitor. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Fantasy forecast.
All right, we are going to kick it off with the New York Giants at 3-1, and one, taking on the Green Bay Packers at 3-1. and one. I just said that sentence, and I don't know if I believe it. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Green Bay minus 8 at home. The over-under is just 40 points. That gives the Giants just 16 points on the road. Is this a very simple Saquon and no one else situation? Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, this is as, about as easy as it gets. Um, I It... To, to speak one more uh, second on the Kadarius Tony Wandale Robinson uh, practices, I went back and looked last week because I couldn't remember if they were, you know, a lot of times you get these limited practices, but it's just Wandale people was not. off to the side. Neither one. Neither one were limited last week. So getting a limited practice in is great news. These are guys I would be picking up off the waivers, not playing this week, uh, but certainly if they are back to practice, I th this team desperately needs them. Uh, it does appear based on, you know, just practice and not signing a quarterback that Daniel Jones is going to be good to go as far as active I don't know if he'll have the same mobility you know he had two rushing touchdowns last week and I doubt that uh with his injury that he'll be able to kind of turn on the wheels turn them on turn them on <laughs> got it or even just turn them yeah um, they just they don't need power. Yeah, they're just so what wheels. What kind of powered wheels do you got? Over? Uh, oh, power, power, power wheels. Gotcha. Right. No, that's a pretty strong rebuttal. Uh, this game's in London, by the way. I should have oh. led with that. It's an early morning game. Set your alarms if you are worried about a player being active. Or set if, your alarms if, or if you're, you're not. not. Yeah. I mean, Saquon. Uh, you you want him in there? I don't think there's any report that he's gonna miss. You better wake up and make sure yeah. one hour before a game. And, uh, Somehow this is the 32nd London game in the first time ever with two winning records in London. What? Is yeah. that real? Yeah, we we usually send them our best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like it's well, almost, we tried to send them a losing record and the Giants came out and went three and one. It's because it's it's almost always been the, the Jaguars and the Jaguars have been terrible for a long time. So uh, on the on the Giants side to speak to Saquon, right now his over-under on DraftKings Sportsbook is over 100 combined rushing and receiving yards. That's kind of the, the betting That's baseline. Nice. So That's nice. Yeah, you, you love to see that and nobody else. The Packers defense, 13th right now against the running back. Saquon just gets so much work and has looked great. So, yeah, he's, he's locked. Aaron Rodgers on the other side will be – Taking on the Giants, their their defense has been solid so far through four weeks. It's what's been keeping them in these games that they end up winning at the end. Ninth against quarterback, second against wideouts. That makes it a pretty difficult situation. I mean, I think it's difficult in general to analyze the wide receiver room in Green Bay just like it was before the year because, you know, these both teams are on the road for this game. I realize that. But it hasn't been prolific for the for the Packers offense. And you're in a situation where, you know, Romeo Dobbs, he's been good. The trust is probably building. Alan Lazard, eight targets last week. So you could you could just lock those two in if you want to. Yes. But I don't know where this is evolving to. And, and Aaron Rodgers himself, like from a fantasy perspective, I haven't seen people starting him anywhere. And it did you see these comments this morning? <laughs> yeah, we're back to retiring. Yeah, I mean, he basically just said, you know, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I just read the the headline. It was a, it was a myriad of things that might make him not come back. But one of them was the development of the young wide receivers. It was like if they don't develop, apparently that's a condition in which he might, you know, walk off into the forest. I feel like that's good news for Romeo Dobbs in the sense that Aaron Rodgers is saying, I need this guy to develop so that I can have a, uh, you know, a future here. Dobbs has been playing the number one role. If you look, he he can't really go up any in snap and route participation. He has been on the field for all their passing downs. Uh, he has been leading in targets, and I think Dobbs is a is a strong play. I'm fine uh, playing him. the The Giants they look like they have a good defense. A lot of that has been the schedule. The schedule adjusted defense right now. They are not a very great defense. So I think that the Packers can come in here, put on a show. I'm happy to play both running backs, uh, Dobbs and uh, Aaron Rodgers, as you know, it was a low end option. Mm. I'm 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 happy to play both Lazard and Dobbs. Lazard has the snaps have gone up every week as he's been returning for that ankle injury. He scored in two of his three weeks, and then last week was over a uh, hundred yards. So I, I like we're. We, well, you're you're certainly hoping for one of them to become 
like a Devontae Adams, a Jordy Nelson, just a true alpha number one, I think we're we're seeing that split into the two guys, which is it's still fantasy relevant. It's just it's not top ten, but both of these guys I think are like low level twos, high level wide receiver threes. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'm I'm fine starting Lazard as well. And and to speak to the schedule adjusted defensive ranks, because I'll I'll be talking about that a little bit as as we go through some of these matchups now that we've got a month of the season in. Basically a lot of times, you know, you might look great against quarterbacks. The defense is not giving up a lot of points to quarterbacks, but it really makes a difference a month in. Well, what quarterbacks have you played? You know, were yep. you playing Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen and shutting them down? Or, you know, were you, were you playing, a, a you know, Cooper Rush and he didn't put up a lot of points, but it, he wasn't expected to. Um, so the schedule adjusted defensive ranks basically take what the expectation of the players they that that defense played against and then says, how did you do against what they should have done? Did you do better or worse? So like against quarterbacks right now, uh, and and running backs, the Giants project as the 22nd best against those two positions when you adjust for the schedule. Interesting. So is that you saying that the teams that they played beat their expectation against them uh, no, at those positions? I'm saying that the teams that they played haven't been very good, and so while they didn't give up a lot of points, they weren't expected to score a lot like, of points. The, the Giants have played Ryan Tannehill, Baker Mayfield, Cooper Rush, and Justin Fields. Right, exactly. So, so it looks like, are, oh, they don't give up a lot of points to quarterbacks. But it's like, well, those quarterbacks don't score a lot of points. Of right. course they don't. But that doesn't mean that they're a bad defense because no. you don't know what they're going to do against the good quarterbacks it, yet. Absolutely. It doesn't guarantee it. And as the season goes along, especially once we get to like week eight, the schedule adjusted will be a really, really valuable metric. Do you play Aaron Rodgers? I am okay with it. Jared Goff. On the road in New England with how well play, he's being. I play. Oh gosh. I would definitely play Aaron Rodgers. I play Rodgers. Yeah. The, he's not finished inside the top uh, twelve in any week. He's only averaging two hundred thirty-four passing yards per game. Man, Jer Jared Goff is. That's a really tough call. I'd play Goff. I mean that. Really? Yeah, because there's no explosiveness right now in this offense. Man. I, yeah. No, I, I agree with so, that. But, but if you. I get that Jared Goff had a monster week, you know, without his weapons last week, but that's the Seahawks are not the New England Patriots on the on the road in New England. It's three straight weeks that Aaron Rodgers has scored sixteen fantasy points. Sure. It's it's a very tough call. I have them basically have just a couple spots between them. Rodgers has thrown three picks so far. Doesn't he normally hit about seven on the season or something less like that? or yeah. something? Yeah. Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon. Only one touchdown on the year for A.J. Dillon right now. Are we concerned about the upside of Dillon based on what the first four games have revealed? Uh, he's averaging nearly 18 opportunities a game, so I'm not I'm not concerned that you haven't had the big explosive week. Week one was very good, uh, but when it comes to a running back, you just you want touches and you want some targets, so it's... You just haven't hit a big time yet, but A.J. Dillon is still in play. Rodgers hasn't thrown for more. Last year was four picks. Yeah. On the season? On the season. Wow. The, week, the year before, five. The year before, four. The year before, two. He doesn't throw them. It's wild. It does. I mean, you've seen the difference with that Devontae. Sure. Without question. But hopefully Dobbs, Watson has only played like 25% of snaps. He's not startable. I don't even know if he's worth a hold. What would you tell somebody is, is Christian Watson worthy of keeping on your bench? Because Watson is yes to me. What's the outcome there? Because uh, Dobbs is obviously got him beat right now. I, th I think the outcome is just simply the fact that he was injured, and so he's still working his way back from injury. As far as getting, he's got to earn the snap counts and the target share. But when you've got the the draft capital they put into him, the athletic profile that he has, I, I still feel like he's probably more valuable than holding a you know a Zay Jones that could you know if if you need a start obviously Zay Jones is going to be a better start than Christian Watson but if these guys are just on your bench you can find a Zay Jones off of waivers every week sure I, I remember you guys talking a lot about rookies with Green Bay before the season yeah and so I was trying to figure out if Christian Watson has a path to be in every week start uh, the path is there it's the probability is low 
but the path remains. Yeah, I mean, I I will say I would rather if you're talking about the low end rookie wide receivers who you know are very droppable, I would rather have Sky Moore than Christian Watson. Robert Tunyon, his touchdown guarantee is only available in the United States of America. Oh, Unfortunately, I can't guarantee you one, but I do think he's going to continue to be involved in this offense, especially in the red zone. Continental. Uh, no, I mean, if they played a game in Hawaii, I'd be willing to guarantee a touchdown. Okay, okay. awesome. I'd, I'd throw awesome. A, a luau for nice. Tunyon. Yeah. yeah. All right, quick break. Back with some more matchups. <laughs> Detroit Lions, one and three. The aforementioned Jared Goff taking on the one and three New England Patriots. We expect to have Mac Jones back in this game. I mean, most players would not be back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, with the injury that he had, but yeah, I mean, he could be. <laughs> Draft King Sportsbook line, New England minus three over unders. 45 and a half. Okay. I mean. Okay. I mean, I, this might not be <laughs> the the kind of the terror that the New England defense puts in you when you go on the road. I just don't know if that is there right now. Um, 24th ranked against fantasy quarterbacks, points given up, 27th against tight ends. So, you know, TJ Hawkinson, I think you can stay in the – he earned himself like instant fire. You know how we say it's got to be three weeks in a row? I think if you, if you approach 40 at tight end, and yep. I mean not the age like Antonio Gates, but the point total – like Hawkinson, I think that's instant fire. I think any time you put up three big weeks in one week, um, right. that counts as instant fire. Ew, so interesting. You're so, going to need to take this up with the with the committee. The NBA Jam Committee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if they still gather yearly as they used to. It would to. be like if you made a 10-pointer, you're automatically on fire. They just don't have 10-pointers in the game. Yeah. Or right. behind the back from half court. Obviously, the same as a 10-pointer. Exactly. All right. Uh, Jared Goff. He's the quarterback five. The recipe for success for this Detroit offense has been not having a defense. And he's capable of high volume, uh, garbage time, all of these things that we saw last year. They've been on display even more this year. So, you know, in a game where you don't love going on the road to play New England, I still think Hawkinson, Jamal Williams, yep, maybe Goff, depending on your situation at quarterback. Like, would you play golf on the road at New England, or you play Russ tonight? I think I'd play Russ tonight. I would rather because it play feels him. safer. I'd I'd rather play Russ. What about uh, Derek Carr on the road against Kansas City? Derek Carr is is who I would go with. Yeah, I would take I would take Derek Carr. <laughs> well, Jared, Jared Goff has been on the fire. The nicest thing we've ever said about Derek Carr. And I I don't want to take anything. Send in the car. Send in the car. I don't want to take anything away from Goff because Goff was missing so many of his weapons and he was absolutely awesome. But it was, you know, at home, in a dome, against the Seattle Seahawks, terrible defense, going on the road to New England, who they don't have the scariest defense in the world. But in New England, they're going to be a lot for Goff to handle. So he, to me, is a uh, a quarterback two on, on the week. I'm starting all those other names over Goff. Are you looking at any of the wide receivers if we don't have Amon Ra out there trying to, you know, play Josh Reynolds roulette? I I feel like Josh Reynolds is a fine PPR option. I mean, you're talking about ten targets two yeah. weeks ago, eight targets, seven receptions this last week. Josh Reynolds is is fine. On the other side of the ball, Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson should have huge opportunities in this game. Both should be started. At wide receiver, they should get Jacoby Myers back, right? Is that a guarantee? Um, yeah. It's not a guarantee. All right. Well, don't guarantee it then. Uh, Devontae Parker has had two straight great weeks. So if Myers is back, is he the preference? If Myers is back, I don't think I'm playing anyone. If Myers is gone, you can say, okay, uh, Devontae Parker, let's go for another good week. But the, the thing is, is last week, it was he one a, big play. He had a 25-yard touchdown. That was one of his two targets. So it's really hard to trust Devontae Parker. What if, like, we still don't know for sure that it will be Mac Jones. If it's uh, Taylor Zappi. If it's Zappi. Zap, zap, zap. I mean, I mean, if he's zapping people on the field, are you will? No. I mean, I'm bailing out. Oh, big bail. Okay. I'll, I'll, big, big bail. Even if it's Mac Jones. In a big bucket. I <laughs> mean, the, the matchup is nice, but Mac Jones is going to not be at full strength 
obviously with his high ankle sprain. I, I feel like this is a Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, and get out. Yeah, Johnny Smith's going to sure. miss this game. Hunter Henry has done nothing all year. You'd love to say, well, he's all alone. He'll do something. No, don't mess around with it. Pittsburgh at one and three take on the one and uh, the three and one Buffalo Bills. The DraftKings Sportsbook oh, line. Oh, oh, Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. Get wrecked. It's Buffalo minus fourteen at home. The over unders forty six. That is a thirty point line oh. for Buffalo. Sixteen for the uh, Kenny Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, this it, this is like this was the. The Tom Brady, Randy Moss years, like back when they were getting the, the spread was always two touchdowns, and you're like, I guess I'm going to see the points. I mean, I don't know what the money line bet is on Buffalo here. Oh, it's got to be terrible. Minus nine fifty. Nine fifty. Oh. <laughs> oh man. I still would. I just. I don't see how Buffalo can lose this ball game, and maybe that's famous last words. Brooks no, is I, looking at me like it is, but. Minus 950 seems nice. With a rookie That's quarterback. That's a great return. A rookie quarterback going to Buffalo. And and he looked good to me. I know he threw three uh, interceptions, but I thought Kenny Pittsburgh looked just fine. He had two rushing touchdowns. He was certainly better than Mitchell Trubisky. But a rookie going to Buffalo against one of the four elite defenses in the NFL, he is not going to do jack squat in this game. There's a reason they only have 16 implied points. Uh, it's very difficult for me to take any Pittsburgh Steeler not named Najee Harris. And and Najee Harris, I wanted to talk about him a little bit and maybe broaden the discussion to dynasty, but you know, 3.9 yards per attempt in his first season, made up for it with 74 receptions. Through 4 games this year he has 10 total receptions. He's also running for 3.5 a carry. So when you look at this situation, the growth that has to take place with Kenny Pickett, what are, where are you expecting for Najee Harris? Man. I mean, he's on pace for 40 receptions. That would be almost half of last year. Najee, Four touchdowns and 800 yards. Najee's next month is Buffalo, oh, no. Tampa Bay, Miami, Philadelphia, bye week. New Orleans after that. I mean, ooh, you, I mean, you might. That's you, nausea, Harris. I mean, you might yeah. want to be uh, sending some feelers out there and see if you can, can uh, flip Najee into something. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't blame you if you can upgrade at running back from Najee to, you know, it, pair him with someone and upgrade to a more capable, more uh, would you play consistent running back. But I would, I would still. Melvin tonight over Najee? Against Buffalo on the road? I mean, yes, I would. I would. I would. Ugh, uh, I don't that, like that. This is where if you could take the names away. I don't like it. I think it'd be an easier decision, but you. Well, if you take the names away, you say, okay, Najee's not going to be great. He's not going to put up anything electric, but he's on pace for almost 300 opportunities this year. And whenever you have that much volume, that doesn't mean you're going to be great for fantasy, but he's not going to really often not hit 10 fantasy points like 10 fantasy points as a baseline for your running back two or your flex option I, you know I expect them to get 10 fantasy points this week and that's I'm not writing home to mom and being like mama I got 10 fantasy points but I would take the under this week you well sure this is a well man Buffalo's so good yeah well and, and if you're maybe if you're a favorite you take the 10 maybe if you're an underdog even line you, you'd rather go Melvin yeah I think I'd go Melvin either way. Okay. Hey. Uh, the other options on the offense. I mean, uh, Pat Fryermuth. If you've been playing him, I think you can keep playing him. He did get a and lot. You of, can pray. He got a lot of targets from Kenny Pickett um, when Pickett came in the game, so that's hopeful. This, I mean, th this matchup is more of a let's watch what Kenny Pickett does because when he came in, his targets went to George Pickens and not to Deontay Johnson. So, I mean. I, I guess if you have Deontay, maybe you're playing him. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find a different option for anybody. Try to find your way out of Pittsburgh players. Yes, one hundred percent. The schedule adjusted defense. If you want that, they're number one against quarterback, number one against tight end, number two against wide receiver. The Bills defense is phenomenal. Josh Allen <laughs> remains excellent. Number one in expected points per pass attempt. He's a machine. Devin Singletary. 
Hey. It's been an interesting year for Singletary. 14 opportunities per game. The RB 26 on the year. Always has the chance to have kind of a bigger game when this offense gets going. Pittsburgh has not been able to stop the run or the pass. They, they've they lost three of their best defensive pieces. And this was a good defense week one. They're no longer a good defense. You have a situation right now where Jamison Crowder at the wide receiver position broke his ankle. Isaiah McKenzie, last I had read, and, and, and Kyle, you should see recent practice reports if there's anything new. Last I had seen, the report I read made me think he's going to miss this game. Um, With the concussion? Correct. Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't done anything to my knowledge yet in practice. The hit was brutal. McKenzie came out and said like he couldn't move for a portion Dang. Uh, after the hit. So, you know, Stephon Diggs is obviously in your lineup. I'm just trying to find that next man up to trust. You know, Gabe Davis has been beat up. I still think week one was a little bit of a, a, a deception in terms of the fact that, like, the one play he scored the touchdown on was this – it was a really – it was a well-crafted misdirection. No one was around him. He It wasn't like a, a route down the field. I'm just worried about the targets per route run. I'm worried about the involvement in the offense. Sure. But I feel like this is a get-right opportunity for him with the potential of McKenzie missing the game, already without Crowder. Highly asked on the website right now, Romeo Dobbs or Gabe Davis? Dobbs. Ooh. Okay. I, I, I would go Dobbs just because we've seen a couple of games with Gabe Davis where he isn't getting the targets that you would hope he gets. He, he certainly has the higher touchdown upside because you've got Josh Allen. I don't think Gabe Davis is someone you have to sit, but if you've got a really good option, uh, which I view Dobbs as a good option, then I'm I'm willing to make that switch. Yeah, I'm, I, I want to see targets go Gabe Davis's way because right now he seems really big play dependent. Had that 47-yard catch in week one it's just a little concerning from a lock him in your lineup standpoint Dawson Knox has not seen an end zone target and doesn't seem really like a viable player right now no not right now if McKenzie does go somehow he's in play to me I agree uh, as the slot wide receiver and then if McKenzie does miss I mean probably more of a DFS play but or a deep league dart throw Khalil Shakir would fill in as the slot wide receiver and that's I mean speaking of of targets uh, like the the slot wide receiver for Josh Allen gets targets Houston oh three and one taking on the two and two Jacksonville Jaguars Jacksonville negative or uh, <laughs> Jacksonville <laughs> minus seven according to the DraftKings sports book the over under is 43 and a half Houston we have had some problems Damian Pierce has not been one of them the last two weeks. The RB10, the RB6, you lock him in, you start him. Yeah, I, yep. I'm, I'm willing to start him. Jacksonville hasn't been great against running backs. Brandon Cooks, better week last week. Uh, up to 15, you know, caught seven of seven targets. He got into the end zone and looked pretty good. He's going to be okay. Yeah, he feels like a sleeping giant. That just Everything is still there for Brandon Cooks. They're, it, it, just the... The connection with his quarterback had been failing, but we finally got that with a hundred percent catch rate against the Chargers this past week. So I do, I do believe that Brandon Cooks will be, you know, a a, a wide receiver two moving forward. Mike, any comments on the the uh, tight end position for Jacksonville? Evan Ingram one catch in each of the last two weeks. This makes me sad. I know. I know. This makes me sad. I know. I know you you wanted something to happen there. Yep. He's no Kyle Pitts, though. Uh, smash matchup for James Robinson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. still a sit matchup for Travis Etienne until he gives you a game. Yeah. I, Although it looks like he could do something here. Um, Possibly because the it Texans like have been have last so week. bad at running back. But this is really, when you're looking at the Jacksonville Jaguars right now, I think you've got to look at the game script and what your expectation is for how that's going to go. We might be wrong about how it goes because Jacksonville has been surprisingly good but in this matchup they're at home they're favored by a touchdown they're playing against a very porous run defense and that to me says James Robinson all the way if they're not in passing situations then Travis Etienne might not have enough snaps to be valuable if, if he doesn't get a touchdown he probably has a really bad fantasy he only had one target last week in a negative game script too yeah one he's gone from four to three three to one 
It was very discouraging last week. And he gets smaller by the week. He loses <laughs> five to ten pounds every week. Oh, every man. time, just so the, the was it like thinner every single yeah. time. Yeah. Oh yeah, he and, the, and scaled down like the Control T in Photoshop. I don't think Andy can help himself. Whenever we're, the Jacksonville Jaguars are on the screen, whenever yeah. Travis Etienne it, it gets on the field or is seen or gets the ball, Andy just is like he's so tiny. <laughs> it's just you. It's, you, it's, you think it's he, a visceral reaction when he bounces off of a defender and then bounces backwards. Yeah, he much does. like Michael Carter. For the record, Michael Carter does the same thing. He doesn't seem very strong. Uh, I think he'd been lying on all his sports cards. That's maybe. all I'm saying. Uh, something to monitor. Again, you know, we're trying to help out with deeper leagues. OJ Howard did take over as the the primary tight end for the Houston Texans last week. He ran. 26 routes he was targeted on 19 percent of them so he's not well brevin jordan's hurt yeah and they uh they just cut somebody Farrell brown Farrell, yeah Farrell brown was was removed so it's just it's something to monitor sure because goodness oj you... howard versus evan ingram what a pile of we potential have, hey we're back to set you down we're back oh, i mean oj howard has more points than pits trevor so. lawrence in this game <laughs> yeah i mean look <laughs> Uh, it's only funny because it's true. Oh man, and more <laughs> uh, more touchdowns this year than Pitts has in his career. That is correct. Oh. Pitts just needs to get in the end zone, man. What's funny is they they had a breakdown of like yards gained by a certain age yesterday. Oh yeah, I saw that. And Kyle Pitts is like like fourth all time. Yep. Still. You know, ahead of Gronk, ahead of Kelsey, all these players. He's twenty two today. We want him to be something he's not. Is it, Arthur an ageist? Like Arthur is. Pitts is too no, young. No, no, no. He's he, what he is 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 stupid. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, I want to believe there's a bunch of Atlanta coaches sitting in a room. Here we are again. Here we are again. <laughs> there, are, there's a ton of Atlanta coaches sitting in a room, and they got a big old whiteboard. Kyle, you'd appreciate this. They got a whiteboard in the room. And Kyle loves a white boy. And they have one question. Like, how do we possibly use Kyle Pitts? And everybody's scratching their head in that room. They have oh. no idea how to use this weapon. Not Arthur. Arthur's got no. a plan. He yeah. says, we, we run the ball. We run the ball. He erases the question and says, run the ball. Yeah, well. What I mean, if we're down 20? Trevor run Lawrence or Russell ball. Wilson? Trevor Lawrence has a great matchup against Houston. I like Trevor Lawrence this week. Uh, he is probably... He's 23 today, by the way. Him and Pitts celebrating a birthday wow, together. Man, oh. so many birthdays. Yeah. That's, what a great day to be alive. I bet you Pitts at 23 will be better than Pitts at 22. Oh, it won't be hard. Um, <laughs> uh, I would agree with you. Uh, yeah, when it, when it comes to, to Trevor Lawrence, I would play Russell. But Trevor Lawrence is the last of the players that I would play ahead of golf. I've noticed over the last week when we compare a player to Russell Wilson, our answer seems to say we still believe Russell Wilson can figure this out. I would play Trevor Lawrence. Or, or not, you know, or not. Hey, guess who we get to talk about? The Atlanta Falcons at 2-2. Two and two. Here we go. Taking on the 2-2 two and two Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Tampa Bay minus 9.5. The over-under is 47.5. Big, big news, guys. Uh, Tom Brady. Practicing. Oh, whew, good. Pants T on. T-shirt possibly wearing it under the jersey so we don't know the whole t-shirt story but practicing julio and godwin some light work tampa bay is if you if you watch their head coach last week atlanta's about to get it <laughs> <laughs> they're about to get it oh do you yeah. agree with that kyle we're gonna get destroyed yeah. i mean just massacred i think uh tampa bay amazingly this game is to take over the nfc south yeah i i mean this is a game where i i really do think that the atlanta falcons need kyle pitts active and need to have him a part of this game plan the buccaneers are great they are top six in schedule adjusted against quarterback running back wide receiver and 27th against tight end that is where they can be beat kyle pitts has the talent to beat them there. I loved your uh, guarantee of a touchdown this week because the matchup is great for Pitts. You need to play him if he plays. It was such a shame to see him pop up on the injury report. That will that will just ruin everything. Yeah, I think today's practice report will mean a lot. If he's limited, then there's a good chance he'll play. If not, you're going to have to find another option. You might, as Jason said, need to find another option anyways. But I... 
if you think that the problems plaguing Kyle Pitts don't exist at all for Drake London or other pass catchers on that offense, you're wrong. Marcus Mariota is a huge problem. The run-centric offense is a huge problem. Drake London caught 29% of his passes last week. I don't think it's because Drake London stinks. It's because the quarterback position is not being treated the way it is in other in other on other teams. And the recipe is unfortunately working for Arthur. His yeah. plan worked. He won the game. That is a problem. Yeah, I mean, when you don't have that much talent, if you want to slow the game down, run the ball more, uh, milk the clock, uh, make the game essentially shorter and, and not give uh, your opponent as many chances to score on your bad defense. It's it's a good approach for trying to stay in these games and make sure that your draft pick can't be good enough to help your franchise in the future. Drake London, a, I believe, is a very difficult decision this week because his he, yeah, he caught a very low percentage of the targets, but he's Still saw seven of them last week. He's seeing a ridiculous 34%. Much smaller pie, of course, but that's still like he is the focal point of the offense. Tampa Bay is terrifying. So would you guys go with Drake London or let's say Terry McLaurin against Terry McLaurin, the easy, Tennessee Titans? Terry McLaurin, easy, easy. Okay. Uh, Drake London or Gabe Davis? I would go Gabe Davis. You know, Terry McLaurin's got a lower separation number than Allen Robinson this year. Really? Yeah. What are you, what are we doing here, Terry? Get it together, brother. Uh where where are you on Gabe Davis, Drake? I think I take Gabe Davis. Okay. Yeah, I I just think your your floor is pretty scary. Drake London, you know, if Pitts doesn't play, I think you can kind of pencil in 7 to 10 targets for Drake London, so maybe that makes him safer and um I just don't know if the upside's there against Tampa Bay. They have a their defense is going to be back with a fire this week and Brady will have weapons and um, it's going to be Tampa. Yeah. It's going to be Tampa in this game. And then that, that puts you in a tough position because a lot of players went out and spent fab on Tyler Algier, Caleb Huntley and enjoy that ride. I mean, that ride might be a painful one this week. It's going to be bumpy. Okay. It's not paved. Got it. Go on. I mean, the, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's a swamp. Yeah, it's, right. It's a swamp. I hope you have a gator boat to get through the yeah. line. Yeah, because if it's a car, you're just you're not going anywhere. I mean, they will run regardless of success. That is that true. is true. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Uh, if I had to start one, it would certainly be Tyler Algier. He was running routes. He is the first man up. He is the more talented of the two backs. Uh, he has the higher team capital spent on him. I'm not starting Caleb Huntley under any situation, even if he uh, happens to get a touchdown this game the way that he got last game. Great. I will be happy to say process over results, and he's on my bench. Uh, Are we getting a Chris Godwin breakout game? Oh, he's he's in. Yeah, since 2018, averaging, you know, what, seven receptions, 100 yards, and 1.3 touchdowns against Atlanta. Yeah, he's back. Okay, okay, okay. Brady. Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about him. I mean, yes. this is like the the main pieces are in. The question, like, what do you guys think about Rashad White, who finally got a little bit of action last week? Uh, if this thing turns into the massacre that we think it could be, then maybe he's on the field a little bit. There's no way I'm starting Rashad White. Okay, I, just... I pound the table that he must be picked up. He must be rostered. He okay. can be a, a league winner, but you can't start him. Okay, moving on. Seattle two and two, the Saints one and three. Games in New Orleans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: New Orleans minus five and a half. The over under is forty six points. Are we getting Jameis Winston? Are we getting Andy Dalton in this game? Don't know. It's still too early to tell. It really could be either at this point. And then Geno Smith has been excellent. You know, you you start to look at Geno the way he's playing, the way that he, you know he's got weapons and Metcalf and Lockett. Can you look at him in streaming quarterback conversations? I mean, I, I think you have to. He's He's been tremendous. He's done everything they've asked him to do. Uh, he's efficient. He can hit the big play. So, the yeah, and, you know, the Saints, it is a tougher matchup. So, they, you're, I mean, you're looking at, like, do you go Geno or Jared Goff? And... That I'd go a, Goff. You'd go Goff? Jay, where, where would you go? I, I would lean Goff there as well. I, they've both been good. Goff is a uh, 
I, I think is a better quarterback, and the, the Patriots defense is not quite as good as the Saints defense. That being said, I, I don't think Geno is someone that, you know, if you're in a two-quarterback league, I think Geno is an okay start as a quarterback, too, here. It's really their run defense that is going to uh, shut people down. You know, Rashad Penny, if you're chasing that from last week, the mon so many people, uh, ourselves included, Mike, had Rashad Penny blow up for 30 points on their bench. And they're going to be like, oh, I got to put him in. I would not do that this week. Would you play Zeke or Penny? Zeke. Zeke. Against uh, the Rams? Yeah. yeah. Would you play Geno Smith or Matthew Stafford against the Dallas Cowboys? I'd play Geno. Yeah, I would yeah. as well. Matthew okay. Stafford has been terrible. Yeah, I would agree. That's, that's, a, that's a funny place to be. At it this is. Point. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of those kind of uh, questions. Stafford is going to get a lot of looks at the ceiling of that new dome uh, <laughs> in SoFi Stadium this week. Okay. Chris Olave, lock him into your lineup? Yes. Absolutely. With with the injury right now to Michael Thomas, who didn't participate in practice on Wednesday, uh, the air yards given up I, oh, by love him. Seattle. He's so good. Yeah. Uh, he, he has to be started. Jarvis Landry, on the other hand, does not have to be started. No, he does not. And Michael Thomas still didn't practice on Wednesday, so it's kind of Olave here. Uh, we talked about Alvin Kamara being back in your lineup. Yep. Selfishly for Olave, I hope Winston's back just because he looks his way downfield a little bit more. But last week, Olave still got into the end zone. That I mean, I talked about it. Positive touchdown regression was coming his way. With that amount of involvement in the offense, he's going to find himself in the end zone. Yeah, that, that's the nice thing about having Andy Dalton as a backup. The gap between Andy Dalton and Jameis Winston, it exists. It is worse to have Andy Dalton, but it isn't uh, detrimental to the point where you can't start Olave. The Chargers are 2-2, two and two and they take on the Cleveland Browns, who are 2-2. Two and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Chargers minus 2.5. The over-under is 47.5. Jason shaking its head. I, I love, don't know why. I love this game. I think that this is the sneaky start game of the week. Uh, I've got bets on the over. Um, I, you know, the, the Chargers defense lost Bosa. The Cleveland Browns offense has been better than expected. They've been running the ball so well. The Chargers can't stop the run, but the Chargers will score if the Browns do. I, I, I think this game could be really fun for fantasy. Okay. I, I agree. Last year, this game was 47 to 42. Woo. Yeah. And uh, in Cleveland, same same situation. So, I mean, that means Herbert, Eckler, Mike Williams, Gerald Everett, they're all in your lineup. Josh Palmer was a little banged up, a little, little worried about trying to get him out into your lineup this week. Uh, not a lot of targets. Keenan Allen won't play, I don't I don't believe. So, from a weapon perspective, I think Eckler's going to have to catch some passes. On the other side, Chubb, you lock him in. I like Kareem Hunt this week. Amari Cooper can have a bounce-back game in this one, although it's a little nerve-wracking to start him at times, but you guys are both fine with it. Absolutely. I think Cooper's a, a good start, and in Joku, I mean, there's there's – you know, there's four players on both sides of the ball that you're going to start, and I think they're all good starts, and it's pretty easy to separate the line. Like, I, I wouldn't start Donovan Peoples-Jones. I personally wouldn't start Josh Palmer, uh, assuming Keenan Allen is out. Obviously, you're not going to start him. So it, this game is just like start the, the known commodities and Everett enjoy. and Njoku in this game, would you play Everett or Njoku? I, would, <sighs> I lean the Everett direction. That one is so tough. I lean... In Joku, but I like both players. That and this is the, these are guys that I know for sure. There are teams that have both of these players, and they have to make that decision. So where you got to be the tiebreaker here, Mike? I would look at my rankings. <laughs> I mean, like I want to play in Joku. Uh, Herbert's the better quarterback. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, no, I I have Gerald Everett one spot ahead of David and Joku. Okay. Anything else in this game you guys want to discuss? Uh, just uh, pointing out of interesting of, you know, Amari Cooper, just a massive dud. Last yeah, one week. catch on four targets. Coming off of two really, really strong games where, I mean, his target volume was absolutely outrageous. And last, it those two duds, or I'm sorry, those two monster games that Cooper had, Donovan Peoples-Jones disappeared. And then last week, he was nine targets. So it, Like week one. Yeah, so it... it I mean, if this is the trend, then we know that oh, that only one of those players can <laughs> have success. Brissett only has eyes for one of them. Yeah. At a time. <laughs> All right. 
Let's move on. Starts of the week. All right, week five. We've got your starts of the week. Jason, why don't you kick us off at quarterback? Sure, I'm going to go with Tom Brady in that matchup against Atlanta. T Tampa Bay's team implied total. Yeah, send in the plant man. Uh, 28.3 implied points. Uh, 28.3. That's right, 28.3. What? The Buccaneers against the Falcons. Oh. Oh, oh the I numbers see. that are bad. Look, uh, Tom Brady's 10-0 and in his career versus uh, Atlanta, including that 28-3 Super Bowl victory uh, in four games versus Atlanta since becoming a Buccaneer. Here's his lines. 390-2. and two. 399 and 4, 276 and 5, 368 and 4. Tom Brady has just, just gone nuclear on the Falcons. He's got his weapons back. You play him. Mike? All right, I'm going with Joe Burrow. We This is the week he gets the Ravens. I have him uh, just outside of the elite quarterbacks. He's my So my favorite of the, who's not in that bunch. Last year against Baltimore, the QB2 and the QB1, that 525-4 and four performance was against the Ravens. And the Ravens, they look exactly the same as last year where you're going to be able to exploit that secondary. All right, I'm going with a quarterback from the highest over-under of the week, Derek Carr. Send in the oh, car. there it is. Send in the car. How's it feel? Oh, super nerve-wracking. <laughs> uh, it's also a Monday night football game. Oh, but the Chiefs, no. the Chiefs' defense has been really, really bad against the pass. The Raiders are throwing at the fourth highest rate in the NFL, and the Chiefs are being thrown on 72% of the time. That's the highest in, in the NFL. And the reason being is they're going to score a ton of points against the, the Raiders. So the volume should be there. He has an elite weapon. Like last year when matchups were lined up like this for Derek Carr, it was still a little bit of a – um, uh, more of a gamble, I think, in my mind with dependency on Waller and Renfro. You add Devontae Adams to that mix, and they're in a must-win situation. Mac Hollins, baby. You add Mac Hollins to the mix. That's what he I was gets, getting at. He gets large. Like, ETN gets smaller. Mac Hollins is just... If they were on the field, every, if every they week. played each other, you'd just siphon <laughs> the entire body away. You would watch ETN disappear as Mac Hollins... He would just be a jersey. ...becomes <laughs> Mo Alley ...on the Cox. ground. Yeah. It's like um, a Dementor? Is that, they, is that what they do? Matt uh, Collins yeah, is? Sure. Yeah, I like that. Running back. Uh, at running back, James Robinson against Houston. This is a game uh, yeah. at home, seven-point favorites against the Texans, and the Texans are allowing 172 rushing yards per game, the most runs of 10-plus yards or more. James Robinson should be a smash play this week. I'm going with Damian Harris, who says he does not care about your snap counts or your algos or your math because he he's just getting it done, and the matchup is there. The Lions are the only team to give up top 12 running back points every single week. They're allowing 5.3 yards per carry. The way that Harris and Ramondre, it's being handled, they're just it's alternate drives. So I think that there is a, there is a good chance for Harris and Ramondre to both end up in the top 24 this week. They're home favorites. If they it's if it's zappy, if it's a hobbled Mac Jones, zap, zap, zap. they're they're gonna rely even more on Harrison Ramondre. All right, here we are in the uh the start of the week at running back, and everybody knows that the emotional pits guaranteed touchdown thing. That came outside the context of the actual guarantee area. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is the starts of the week. That's where Thielen and Tunyon were. And that's where Kareem Hunt is this week. Kareem Hunt's my start of the week at running back. Oh, man. I to guarantee go he's going to score a touchdown this week. He's had 15 opportunities per game, but he has somehow not gotten into the end zone the last few weeks. He's Much been failing in the Hunt zone. Mike has been screaming at the television. It's yes. happening in this game against the Chargers. Um, he was the RB8 last year against them with a couple of touchdowns. It's happening this week, Kareem Hunt. Okay, I like that. You're putting uh, a little... Uh, <laughs> plus, plus 165, anytime touchdown score. Okay, uh, let's see. Where are we? Wide receiver. Wide, wide receivers. I'm going with Chris Olave regardless yeah. of the quarterback situation. Michael Thomas is still banged up. Uh, and if Jameis Winston is there, uh, I mean... You could have 15 targets. Yeah. You, Seattle's allowing the third most expected points per pass attempt. And more importantly... The second most 20 plus yard passing plays. That is the like Chris that. Olave special sauce. 
He's see- seeing nearly four deep targets per game. The chasm between Chris Olave's league leading 673 air yards and second place some guy named Tyreek Hill at 453 is absurd. The The combination of the deep targets combined with Seattle's matchup, he I just don't see how he doesn't have a big play in this game. I'm going with Robert Woods of the Tennessee okay. Titans. Okay. Bye, trees. Traylon Burks is out, and quietly over the past three weeks, Woods is seeing a 26% target share. He's recovered from that ACL. Then you look Getting at them stronger. Look at the matchup. The Manders have given up top 12 wide receiver points every week. Top six and three of the four. Christian Kirk, six for 117. Amon Ra, nine for 116. And Dose, Devontae Smith, eight for 169 and a touchdown. CeeDee Lamb. Six for ninety-seven and a touchdown. Robert Woods as the number one for this team. I, I love Woods it, Mike. Might be on your waiver wire. I love right it now. because I have to play him. I oh, signed I him and I have to play him, and I love hearing that. It's a good play. Uh, I'm going to go with T. Higgins against Baltimore with wide receiver one Pick. potential on the yes. week, and I mean one overall. Last year against Baltimore, he scorched them. Fifteen targets in week seven, thirteen more in week seventeen. Uh, Baltimore is allowing the most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers in the game. The third most 20-plus yard passes. Jamar Chase is always in your lineup, too. They're both amazing starts this week in that game against Baltimore. At tight end, we're going conk, conk, baby. Tyler Conklin, I have finally come around after every single week saying, I don't believe. I wouldn't pick him up. Oh, the quarterback's changing, but he won't go away. He Until is, now, when you make him well, your start of, of the week. Of course. Keep on conking. Uh, he's the tight end. world. Nine on the season. <laughs> he has the most routes run at the position. Miami is allowing the highest pass success rate in the NFL. So if you just need points from the position, which I think a lot of people out there, they're just, yeah, we they need don't that. want a goose. They just want to get, you know, eight, nine points. If you're in full PPR, I'm going to take 40-plus routes, seven-plus targets, um, and and have some guaranteed points from Conklin this week against Miami. And he looks spectacular if he rips his helmet off. That's yeah. true. Conking on, on heaven's door. Okay. Con, con, conking on heaven's door. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's there. It's there. Yeah, I, I like heard it. a chuckle from the deucer's alley back there. Oh, Andy. yeah, it was chuckle-worthy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brooks. <laughs> nice to have you back. Um, I'm going with Dallas Goddard. Good day. Uh, here's the deal. He plays the Arizona Cardinals, and they stink. Uh, Dallas Goddard's averaging five targets and 60 yards. And let me remind you, he plays the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, opposing tight ends are being targeted 27% of the time versus Arizona. Three red zone targets so far, no touchdowns, positive touchdown regression and, can be coming. Yeah, and you might think, well, they played against Darren Waller and Travis Kelsey, and so maybe it's the, maybe they're not really bad. Schedule adjusted, they are the 30th best against tight ends. They suck. Yep. Did you know a couple fun facts from that game? Do you know that the Eagles have never won a game there, ever? What, in Arizona? Yeah, well, in, the, in that stadium. I think that's going to change. They're 0-4. 0-4 all time. Is that including the awesome nfc championship game. i believe it, it would include that <laughs> well i didn't yeah. know playoffs i mean you know well sometimes so they don't just throwing it out there for maybe you know an almost upset or something oh i uh, i dare tj you. hawkinson i dare you tj hawkinson taking on <laughs> new england i can gauge whether an almost upset is going to work by jason's gaping mouth hole which would, is large yeah i'm not i'm not saying i'm doing it i'm just saying i could do it well, you, well, yeah. i got the button uh, TJ Hawkins is my start of the week. New England has given up five touchdowns to the tight end position in the last three weeks, including three straight games. Uh, they have been bad, and Hawkinson is super necessary. Again, Jason got the turd nice and shiny, and I'm putting it in the display yeah. window this week. They were Very wrong. Nice. Um, they were wrong. You can shine a turd. You can shine it. You can sell it. And and uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you should go out there and sell it just yet. but Just wear gloves. Hawkinson... Uh, does it could it pot you know they have the um what is the what are those forests called when the wood becomes petrified petrified a petrified turd that's where i was going <laughs> it was going to be a longer journey than you just s- screaming it from the microphone i just wondered Sorry. if that can happen it's a lot better than a regular turd you could display it well, then and it would the smell would be gone it would be a rock because petrified it would be a, a rock turd okay if you found a petrified turd would you just think it's a rock? I think people save those. Yeah, I think it's a fossil at that point. Have I held 
A petrified turd and not known it? Probably. It's, yeah, it's just possible. Picking up shiny rocks? Yeah, that's where they get probiotics from. We just recycle them? Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we're done with the start of the week, but oh, we've got a goodness. much more important segment um, from a very sophisticated man. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. <clears throat> London felt nice, so I said, let's stay twice, whatever England's laws be. On horseback like Revere, shouting, Brits de here! Victories with the Packers Mason Crosby. <laughs> Okay. Day yeah, boy, stay in England. Day here? Day here. Is that D A E Day here? Now is that is that modern or is that old? Oh, that's super modern. No, that is <laughs> okay. not old English. That the is The kids are saying day here. Mm-hmm, that's right. Okay. Hello, yellow. Where's my young Where's kids. my Uber Eats? Day here. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh by the way, injury update for you. Curtis Samuel with an illness, absent from practice. Uh Dotson. Dotson. Yeah. Still not there. Yeah. We don't have Dotson He's going to miss. Uh, so, yeah, the Washington-Tennessee matchup preview is on tomorrow's show, so we'll talk more about that, give you some more updates. Um, I'm getting sent Etsy uh, links petrified from turds. Al Borland. What do I have here, Al? It's a $50,000 petrified poop. Really? Yep. Uh, pre- it's called a frightening prehistoric effigy, so but, like, but it's, a, it's, it's a bowel a- movement. A dino poop? Is it a dino turd? I mean, that's is it be dinosaur? I have no idea. Or is idea. it like a real big one from like a prehistoric is rat, it a, like a mammoth, a woolly mammoth? It looks pretty big. It looks disgusting. <laughs> I don't understand how it's fifty thousand dollars. It sounds like a deal. It's listed under quote rare find. This item is hard to come by. <laughs> I would imagine so. Yeah, I don't. There must be somebody in this world. That's their. That's their gig. Like yeah. they go out and they look for. Dino turds. Oh, is that like the great find? They're treasure hunters, but you know, it's like I finally found it, the turd. <laughs> yeah, that was gonna be one of the Indiana Jones, but they they actually cut that script. Yeah, Good they call. Went, they went with aliens. All right, yay. <laughs> <laughs> they should have gone back to the yeah, turd because they, they ended up with one. <laughs> uh, Twitch promo here for you. That's where we'll be on Thursday night. Tonight. On Twitch, tonight, <laughs> I'm barely alive at the end of this episode because I'm so Get distracted it. by the um, petrified bowel movements. But BallersLive.com, 8 p.m. Eastern, please come and join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. We just want to hang out. We want you there. Be there. Yes, yes. And so uh, BallersLive.com, it's going to be a blast. Jason's going to say things that he's never thought of before. I mean, me live is a real problem. So We've seen that before. Yeah. Come and, come and enjoy the experience. Yes. All right. That is it. More matchups tomorrow. Wheel of Shame. <sighs> yeah, baby. We'll see you tonight, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>